in order. I guess, uh, let's see Dr. Farland first. Oh, I got in on this accident. You know, it's kind of like some of the other issues I got kind of in here at, at chapter two, but I wanted to kind of go from what was coming up with Davin, be kind of straightforward, kind of work all the recording this. Yeah. I would sure like to go in about the personnel okay. and for 10 minutes. Okay. Can I pass through the director's session? I would like the personnel for what subject? Uh, well, we not like the personnel. 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 We have a motion and a second to go into executive session for personnel reasons that for non-elected personnel for 10 minutes, you think so? 10 or 15. Yeah, let's say 15. 15. Let's go 15. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. This is just, I was going to give you guys an overview of November. Um, on the front, you'll see a lot of these are still pending Medicare. Um, we have a computer glitch. Since October 21st, my computer went down, Randy had to come and replace it. Medicare electrical uh, launches, for some reason, they're getting one claim over and over and over again that has already paid. And I called them, and I said, what is going on? They said, the 21 claims that I have sent are not there. They're only getting the one. And so they keep kicking it out because they keep getting the one back. So I called Randy. Randy had went and reset my whole computer system once, and it's not it's doing the same thing. So he's wow. supposed to be fixing it again. In the meantime, I have sent paper claims in, in their uh, absence to try to get those paid. Um, and then we brought in the uh, 12499 And then the only other thing I have for you guys, I've got a quote here. We have, um, you need this? Sorry, for a minute. For a minute. Okay, okay. Um, looking at wanting to get Stafford a power cot, like what we have here in St. John. It's a bariatric cot. Um, it has cut down tremendously on any back injuries that we have had. We have um, our responders who want to keep them well over there. We already have one with an underlying back injury that can't really lift a whole lot. Um, we do have quite a bit of money left over in the salaries uh, line item that we have um, because we haven't had ALS providers. We haven't had to use that. So I was looking at wanting to purchase a power cot for Stafford EMS. How much did we pay for the one we got here? This is the exact same one that we got here, the fifteen thousand nine hundred five. Right. The hospital paid for part of that. The hospital foundation did. Yeah. They they paid for all of it actually. Yeah. 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 How much? Uh, she's got. She's got lots. We looked this morning. What? Don't say lots. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she's frugally been very frugal this right. year compared to previous years. So she's and you feel this is a necessity? Yes, I do. Like I said, we've got um, talking to the EMS program in Stafford. They always have to call out the fire department to help them with. Oh. They do. And this will take off so much sure of that. that. Yeah, because when you have to do it manually with the cop that they have right now to get the weight off the wheels. This actually, you push a button and it oh, takes it straight up for you. Yeah. So if they have somebody help, it'll be one person. And me and me and Michelle operate the cop by ourselves. So I mean, and wow. that, I mean we're girls, and we can. Do that. So you know, I'm just saying um, it will cut down on that quite a bit. Did the fire call you and had you bring this one over there. Or? We've had to take it over for a transfer to Wichita before um, on a bariatric patient that couldn't fit on a regular cot. So I mean, it is it is beneficial for them. Seems to be the trend. Bigger cots, bigger wheelchairs. Bigger <laughs> People are not getting smaller, by all means. <laughs> yes. ambulances, overload trains, and all this. When I show up on the scene and pick up somebody up the floor, they look at me and go, Oh my god, what? <laughs> <laughs> People are getting So I'll make a motion. We go and I allow Randy Stafford to be purchase this power lift from Stryker for $15,995. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second to allow Misty to purchase the power lift 
top from Stryker for $15,995. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Do you sign this or just the chairman? You can sign it, chairman. <laughs> Any of them? Huh? Sign yours or this one? Or Go ahead. You can sign that one. That's fine. I'll just switch it. Mm -hmm.
35% of our payer mix is Medicare and 36% of private pay. Blue Cross is 8, Medicaid is 6, and commercial is 15. 34% uh, of our accounts are in the 0 to 30 day range, which is good. And 27% is in the 180 plus. speech therapy. That's only when it's needed. Okay, so that's not something where it's that near staff and then they'll be used? No. Don't think of it, just don't get used. No, we don't staff that. Something we have to provide if we need it. Right. So. We contact with that. Okay. 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 And that's not for staggering. It's not. It's like sleep or swallow studies. Oh. Taking a person in a stroke. Oh. 
on your hundred on your real old accounts, what percentage of those are, are collectible or do you write completely right off? Um, all of those that are on here are at ARSI. Oh they are? Yeah. But how long do they sit? I mean, do you yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know your policies. I mean, you know, let them sit there for. I think they will work on them for three to five years. Okay. And if there's nothing, then we write it off. They work on it as long as they can, and then right. they send it back to us and yeah. say, we can't find this person or. You know. Yeah. 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 I didn't know if there was if you had a policy in place, you know, like we do, we try to clean them up once a year. Mm -hmm. If you've done, you know, if you let them sit there for a year or two years, and then said, "Yeah, we're just going to throw our hands policy, but I can't." Yeah. Our policy. <clears throat> but I mean, if that's your total, I mean, that's you know, from your say 150 days to 180 plus, that's. Over 90. Why is that over there? I haven't noticed that one before. Which one? Oh, over 90. Over 90. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that part of all these figures? Most of the timely filing stuff. Is, is that? Is that So that over 90 actually is in that 91 over or not? Yeah, it's in the 180 plus. It's just adding the 91 through the 180 plus together. Uh, okay. Oh, total. that's the total of, of yeah. those four columns. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Because for uh, so hours. That's added plus. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's adding those four yeah, columns. Yeah, you're going to very get a patient. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, it's just different. Uh, that's just a total. Okay. I'm with you now. That's over 90. Yeah, sorry. Total. I don't know why I've never asked that before. Never caught your eyes. It hasn't. No? <laughs> ratios tab. and get ready. Mm -hmm. They were a little behind, so they just came out Friday. And then for the 
actual audit, they'll be out in April for a week. The, uh, and they'll work on the cost report then. Interim cost report. I think about the originally Jason thought of payable of twenty seven hundred ninety thousand to Medicare. And um, I talked to him the other day. It's so weird how this works. Are you you know, we've slowed down mm -hmm. since mm -hmm. from the information he got from the interim cost report. So he said, let me run the numbers towards the end of December and see. So we don't know for sure yet. He thinks it's going to be down. Last year, we got, received see, higher. It just kind of depends on your expenses and your expenses. Do you, do you want your expenses to go down, but then it affects you on the cost report? They tell me there's a fine line there. If we can just find it. Right <laughs> but <coughs> Jason is uh, very knowledgeable on that stuff. So. We have our board meeting Monday night to go over November financials. How was your board's feelings about your October financials? Were they no. okay with it? Or any changes being looked at or? Um, we're not happy about it, obviously. Right. Um, we just need to stay on top of it. Yeah, I don't remember Staffing and work on this. And, I mean, yeah, you can't really push questions. people down. Well, right. right. Yeah, um, I didn't know. I didn't know if there's yeah. any other changes that, that you're looking at or thinking about or. Not today. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll let you know how Monday goes. Yeah. We're continuing to review the charges. We've done the charge master review. Mm -hmm. We're keeping on top of that. That's an okay. ongoing process. Um, One time you said the charge master was helping you generate more in income. Mm -hmm. Do you know? I mean, is that is it been successful? Or? I think we've gotten a lot of things cleaned up so they're getting paid mm -hmm. timelier mm -hmm. and um, getting paid correctly, right. which has helped. I think that's a way to charge master can really pay more to make sure they have yearly meetings and stuff that these guys go to and, and uh, sometimes that's expensive but I uh, mean we've got to stay up on that so that you know fall behind the charge master. And there, there's a lot of you know a lot of talk, different things going on in the healthcare world right now. And, and, yeah. <laughs> and I see I see smaller hospitals like this getting more close to the line. Not being a part of this, right. you know what I mean? It's, and uh, so partnership or yeah, some closer similar. partnership. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of different communication about that going on. But uh, just kind of, so part of it is just kind of seeing how it's going to fall out. You know, the yeah. actions, how you know how things are going to go after that. Crystal ball. <laughs> uh, <which> I, <laughs> uh, I mean, in our last case, I mean, we, we were just at, I mean, the critical care hospitals were a topic. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, that's, yeah. that's why we were just you know, I was curious to see how we that. I don't, you know, it is what it is. I, I, yeah, it is what it is. I don't want to get into it. Right. Of politics because right. that is what it is. Right, yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> and you just, there's a lot of financial things right now. Yeah. And I wish there was a lot. But you guys have the same. Oh, yeah. yeah. Problems, <laughs> you know. I do feel like, uh, and, and what I have to compare it to is three years ago when I started this. Right. Um, my chest doesn't hurt quite as much now as it did then. So, <laughs> I mean, that's, you know. Yeah. October was whatever. And we're better. I think so. We just are, uh, we're going to have to be careful. We'll always have to be careful. Right. Yeah. We did have a pink account that helped in October in Stafford. We're planning on doing a pink account for basketball in with St. John and Maxville. Um, we had someone. Come up last night in Stafford and talked about the health insurance 
market exchange, and I think she's scheduled to come to St. John sometime. I'm not sure what it is. She called. She, she told me the date. I don't remember. <laughs> But it, it wasn't the least she had. Three people, including myself, show up. But she's had one person show up, so. Um, I scheduled it thinking we had an away game, and then it turned out to be a home game, so that was kind of the. You're right. If they're already taking, you know, if they've got their insurance lined up for next year, they don't worry about what was the Well, I think just constantly reminding the citizens in the county that what we offer, the services, and that, you know, it's obvious that the lab is keeping busy. Mm -hmm. and just, and I'm certain there's still a lot of people that go out of town to. When they see their doctor, to get their lab stuff. Mm -hmm. Physical therapy is steady. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're one of our more busy yeah. departments. Well, you know, I, a lot of folks don't realize that they can have other things done for that at this hospital. And, and I didn't know it until I started working at the hospital. But you know, you, you can say to your doc, oh, okay, they have blood work done. I want to have it done at Stafford County Hospital. And, Some that don't want to do that, and that's funny too. I mean, it's their choice. You know. But I do think the doctor's offices are getting more, it's a little bit more of a fight. I mean, they want that business too, you know. So it's. Are the doctors like in Pratt and Great Bend, the, the orthopedic guys that uh, would send somebody to physical therapy, are they tied into their own physical therapist? Or, I'm sure. I mean, I've. Yes, Coaching no. basketball, we got kids doing physical therapy yeah. and they drive to Brighter Great Bend. I said, you know, can you go to Stanford? Well, my doctor sent me over here. Yeah. I'm thinking if well, we can get into that. That's kind of I think they're going to send you to their own hospital, yeah. but if you ask them, ask them. That's kind of what I told them, too. That's I said, kind of what I'm why don't you just check yeah. it out and see yeah. if you can just go to Stanford. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, well, they're giving them the same, they could do the same thing for them, but give them the what, instructions. What, one of our physical therapists is from. Here I see so don't get the same thing. It's just all about education and you just have to keep at that. You know? And then I also feel like this healthcare is a very personal thing and, and you can't, you know, I don't make people mad either. I mean, right. you know, if they want to go to Pratt, go to Pratt. But I'd love to have you here. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas lunch game. today if you want to come over and have Christmas lunch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got lunch yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. So you said board meeting at the hospital is next Monday? Monday, Monday night. Okay. Are you guys still taking turns going? Or is that kind of yeah, Shane's supposed to be gone. Uh, I can go Monday. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just telling them my phone because my Siri is really good at reminding me stuff. Serious? <laughs> yeah, Siri is really good at reminding me. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Have a happy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Are you going to be having employee Christmas dinner too? Well, no. Something no. like that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the department had me. Yeah, we got another one. We got another one tonight too for the economic <laughs> development. So we're pretty well taken care of. Yeah. <laughs> I got the Thank statement. You. KAC. So you want me to pay the dues? One thousand eight fifty six twelve. It's based on that. Good deal. I make a motion we accept the minutes of uh, December tenth. 2014. I second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the minutes of December 10th. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. And also make a motion to adopt the tax roll correct corrections. I second that. Is there, is there less than 10 or we'll approve it? Okay, all in favor of uh, approving the tax roll correction say aye. 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 Motion carried. Greetings. How you doing? Good. Merry Christmas to you too.
for the double earnings for the supper last night. Did you? Okay, I'm here for two things, one for uh, employees and one for the ag use values. One for the employees, I, I need to go to the session just for a little bit to talk and then we can come back out. So I don't know which one, how do you want to do it? Let's, do, want, let's do the other first and then do the executive. Okay. Please. All right. All right. Yeah. This is my annual visit with you on the ag use values. Uh, we actually got them out. They got the state gave them to us a month and a half early this year, so there was another Merry Christmas. But anyway, this shows all to the uh, to the left. This shows all the soil types that we have in Stafford County. To the right is the. Uh, the, the letter that we all know pretty much to the left is the new NRCS soil, soil numbers. This is going to compare in the first two columns as compared to 2015 yeah. use values compared to 2014. All the way over to the right, remember, this is the percent of the county in that soil type, not the percent that it went up. So if you go down and you kind of hit these couple that we have, the, the higher ones and so forth, we actually seen on the average about a 13 percent increase overall. Overall, overall. Mm -hmm. well, from one year to the year. year, about the ag use, the uh, irrigation went up about 35 to 40 percent last year. So it's what they're paying taxes on right now. We've seen they've seen a 35 to 40 percent increase. Last year, the dry crop seen about a 15 percent increase. They had enough last year, they wouldn't change a lot. Yeah. So, uh, two more years, probably, to be honest with you. Two more years that ag use values are going to probably see this kind of an increase. And what this is, remember that the ag use values are set by an eight year period. So, the eight year period, the reason they went up this year is the big difference in commodity prices and so forth from 2005 from 2013. It's a huge, if you go back and look, it's just a huge difference. That even though you use an eight year period with all those statistics, it still made that big of a difference. And 2014 isn't in the use value study yet. And we're going and if you look at 2006 and 2014, you see the same thing. So next year at this time, we're gonna be talking the same increases. I almost guarantee you. Okay. But then after that, whatever we may see in the future may start changing that. You're going to start going up Yeah, you, you're, I think you're exactly right. Because in 07, from, from 3 to 7, we've seen a decline. And then from, from 8, I think you get right on and we've got an increase. And they haven't been that typical, just high percent. It was smaller, but, but you can probably look at the same increase next year. So it's, you said it was rolling eight years? Eight years, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so I can get you some, you know, I, I can get you some numbers that, that show some of this information. Uh, if you guys start getting bombarded and start people start saying this enough, so enough, or if you just want to look, call them, you know, have them call me, whatever. But, uh, but it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty simple when you see it in black and white. Um, and, and one other thing, the capitalization rate uh, isn't, isn't in that locked froze position anymore. It's been widened. Uh, one reason for that is, if you remember the Wyandotte, Johnson County, and, and now, uh, what's what you call it? Sedgwick County uh, are talking, they don't want use values, they want market values. Because what they're saying is, because like you and your business, your percent is on commercial, they're paying 25% of market value. On residential, they're paying 11.5%. If you look at the ag land market value, they're paying 1%. And that's what people in the East are looking at. Last last year, it had no very, nobody kind of laughed. Everybody kind of laughed. Now, there's more in the East saying this has credibility. Uh, we don't want that, though. No. We need to really, because classification on soil type is the way to go. You can learn that from other states. You know, states that, that tax market value on land is it's a disaster. Just think in our county, how many how many neighborhoods, how many areas of the market value of land sells in different parts of the county? 
what sells south of Maxfield doesn't sell pasture wise for it does up at Hudson. You know, that Hudson pasture ground is much better. You know, uh, different parts of the, the county with irrigation. The, the dry crop north of Stafford is the best dry crop in the county. But if you, but if you do market value, that's going to be taxed totally different than ag land north of St. John. Because it's totally different. It's, it's not going to be, it would be, it would be sad. But the soil type would be totally different too, then, huh? The soil type wouldn't care then. Right. The soil type wouldn't care because if we get a sale on market land, I can, I'll, I'll have enough information to break out the, the irrigation, the dry crop, and the, and the grass, but we won't have enough sales to break out this soil type is selling for X amount of dollars and this soil type selling for 200 less an acre. Which one of these soil types would be like for the ground north of Stafford? Uh, the BA, that would be the only... You see the BA anywhere? Yeah, it's the fifth, sixth, seventh one from the bottom. Help me out. Right down there at the bottom. No, oh, 6322. So you're looking for dry crop. 301 dollars an acre and 281. So it's it's pretty good dry crop over there. It's not it's not good irrigated soil. It's too gummy. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's that's really good really good stuff there. Was like that one sale? <clears throat> partial land north of Stafford, and the other partial was south and west, and there was like twenty five hundred dollars an acre difference in sale price. So this is what they're kind of looking at, you know, with the cap rate and so forth. <clears throat> so right now, that you know, the farmers are going to be kind of caught on how much are we going to complain about this, these values going up, because we do know it could get worse if we say too much about the soil types. <clears throat> so they're kind of on a they're kind of on a fine line here on on how many people want to go on to the board of tax appeals with this. So. But anyway, though, you guys can have those if you want them and, and, and so forth. But uh, as of right now, we're right on schedule. Uh, I'm not looking to give any extensions to mail out the valuation notices. So they're probably, they would be mailed, mailed out by March 1st again. So um, as you guys well know, I don't know if you read the article in the Great Man paper, but uh, you know we're going to lose quite a bit of valuation in the oil. Which makes really that, that exemption that we're asking for on the oil even more credible because it does show that it will happen uh, the way we asked for it, you know, mm -hmm. to be the two barrels exempt and so forth. I'm sure you get more about that. Uh, no, but uh, I'm going to go back up to, uh, I, I haven't been up to the legislature meeting, uh, that's January 28th, and I'm going to go this year, I think, <clears throat> and discuss that up there and, and, uh, and, go from, and go from there. I had a couple of them asking why, why we made it so broad they like they wanted to know exactly what we had in there in the first place so I think it's going to be brought up anyway. Okay. I gave them exactly what we had. They wanted something to really go off of. Okay. So. Well, good. It's not the greatest timing in the world with the prices. It's, it's not, you know, <laughs> and, and, I, and I, I keep thinking that, but maybe it's a good timing also. Right. Because well, this, we can reflect, this is why we want it like this. Right. This is why we don't want to shut in. in. Yeah. This is this shows really how fast something can happen. Change. But you know, a year from now we could be back at ninety two, who knows? You know. Yeah. But this is kind of what we were talking about though. At least now you guys see I mean you guys have had a year to see almost see, well not a year, but maybe six months to see that this could have happened. Which in turn that gives you enough time for the prior year budget or for the next year budget that you could get ready for. I mean, and that's to me that would be valuable. I would think to know that you could lose that valuation. Well, we don't have it anyway now anyway, right. mm -hmm. but you could lose it in one year. So I'm looking at maybe this could be a positive thing for us too. I'm trying to work. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can see why that one, the stipulation for price for barrel was in there anyway. I right. think so. Yeah. 
I think so. And, and you know, and, and, and whatever the DVD property valuation department comes up with in January price per barrel, we still have then time to go through the system to get them exempt or get them unexempt, and then we would still know what's going on. So I think it's a good example. We do have time on there. That's all I had on the on the office. Rest of it would be, and, and I probably, you know, we talked about this back in June. I was just, this is more of a follow-up to see where we were at when, when the budget was finalized, you know, and everything. It's kind of see where you guys were at and where you're thinking. And then, um, I guess, so I don't think it's going to take me 10 minutes. I make a motion we're going to executive session for 10 minutes. We all do want to make our off. We're calling like the personnel and salary would be the... I'm just saying it. That's right. I think, I think we can just go. Okay. I second it. Okay. <laughs> we have a motion and a second to go into. Sorry, Joe. That's okay. <laughs> You're going to take my place for a little bit. And then exactly. I'll be session for four I've been hanging out with Lisa. Oh. Well, I'm I'm salary issues of non elected personnel all over say I. Aye. 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 There's not there. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to go find out what kind of hair dye I have. Wait, let me show you. That's <laughs> right. Let me show you. It'd be pretty decent in your uh, yeah. uh, We'll go back in. Fresh. So who, who, determines, who, who determines the soil? Uh, do you remember the 1960-1965 soil survey when they came out? No. Uh -huh. Well, <laughs> it's, it's, it's actually it's in a soil survey book, yeah. and they actually came out and they probed the county and so forth, and they did the soil survey with the soil scientists. A lot of our soil names did come from Oklahoma. Uh, and they came up and they renamed it all the way across. Most counties since the 60s have not reprobed. But they can use the satellites and so forth to rename, like our NA soil that we used to have one NA near on Pine Sand and Reed, is now we have three. They didn't come out and we probe it, but they did it with the satellites and so forth, the, the colors and, and, and so forth. So they renamed those at that point. The NRCS did that in, what year was that? It was around 07, wasn't it? Where they converted over? Was it later? Um, that's about right. And, and that's when they renamed them and, and to get a little more in depth on them. But the actual soil survey, a lot of our soils came up from Oklahoma and Nebraska and just kept going there. That one soil type that if you guys remember a couple of years ago we had trouble with, uh, the state uh, classified it as waste at that $10 an acre. That's that 6300 soil. That's that CA soil that's mm -hmm. actually really good. It's actually pretty good uh, irrigated ground. Um, and actually, Stan Woodward, he helped me get that changed when I went down to the NRCS, and they got involved. And, uh, but they agreed that that was actually comparable soil-wise with the 5870, which is the old uh, CW Carl, Carlisle loom. Uh, and that was, that's, they actually compared that with that soil. That's how we got it out of that waste soil. But that way soil came up from, once again, Oklahoma. Which that might have been right there, but it's not right here. And then the NRCS actually said, up by I-70 is where that soil actually changed that again. So there was just a little area right here that that was, that was incorrect. So there was a little history there. So I need to do anything on, on this here? Are you going to correct those? Oh, I, I, I can go do that and bring it back to you. Do you want to do that then? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay, I'll be back after a while. Do you have any? What time do you want to do something? Uh, I've got raw potatoes. Okay. And then I've got Philip at 1030. I've got some insurance stuff. You just want to buzz them? Couldn't we just make the motions and sign them later? I don't know what to do. Step in, if we do a step increase. Yeah, you can make a 
make a motion to move uh, Marilyn Grizel and Don Keenan from range 5, step 8, to range 8, step 4. I second that motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second to move Marilyn Grizel and Don Keenan from range 5, step 8, to range 8, step 4. All in favor say aye. 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 When is this effective? January 1. And then that brings me to we talked in 2017. Yep. And yeah. I agree with you. That's fine. Okay. All right. I'm bringing it down to you guys. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Oh. Oh. Just give me a second here.
second it. And we have a motion and second. We go into executive session for 10 minutes for the commissioners needed and we're all on paper. Do you know what you want to do? So, let's do a huge deal. That's fine. Uh, well, I Okay. And, and Joe? Can you just have a moment? Well, you got to approve this. this is the first one. This is for K work. Resolution 2014-18. There's four copies of everything. These are the bylaws. Um, which just you don't these don't need approval. So they need to be signed. Are we on? Yeah. yeah, we're back in session. So this is just four copies. Four copies. Four copies of 2014-18, which have to be signed with original signature. Which is pursuant to. KSA 12 2626. Yeah, whatever says. Their distance is 16. Well, there's notices on the back, too. Yes. Now, I'll just make a motion we adopt resolution 2014 18. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2014-18. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Okay, you need to sign there. And then you will just sign this. There's four of them. Okay. okay. Um, then here's the paperwork for KCAM. That was a work comp portion. Mm -hmm. okay. This is the property. Um, there are bylaws and then 2014 <laughs> It's on the, see the, the one that says sign here, turn that over. The paperwork is signing. The resolution it's, is right there. Uh, but all that has to be combined together, so it's rather confusing. Oh, it's just going to sign this. 
Yeah. Real quick, two two items. One is kind of call it housekeeping. Uh, the copier I had in my office uh, was the old one I found in the courthouse here. We kind of been keeping it alive, well past its stated obsolescence date, and. I'm going to uh, lease a new copier from OPI, kind of identical to the sheriff's office lease. And so I don't know if I'll need to sign that myself or whether I need to bring it to you guys. I thought I'd give you a heads up. It'd be a year lease. Like I say, identical to the sheriff's office lease, and we'll just scrap the old one. The old one's got to be 15 years old. And uh, we got our money's worth out of it. So. Mm -hmm. Remember when I first got here, they had a new copier, but unfortunately it was not a lease copier, it was purchased. It was a Kyocera, and about two, three years later it caught fire, I kid you not. <laughs> so we scrapped that and we got very little out of that. Um, second item here, I was reading one of my many newspapers I get, and I can see this happening in Kansas. This is from South Carolina. South Carolina House considers state road dump on counties. In other words, South Carolina, due to funding constraints, concerns, wants to dump 45% of the state's roads onto counties. And of course, the counties are fighting it because with the roads, it does not come revenue. So it's just another unfunded mandate. So I just want to bring that to your attention. I can see that happening in Kansas because I sat down the other day and went through Mr. Sullivan's, you know, specific cuts, not the mm -hmm. press release, but, you know, who was getting, you know, cut off at the knees. Boy, they really socked with the KDOT, let me tell you. Oh, yeah. yeah. Not, not just the state highway fund that some people refer to as a savings account, they also cut KDOT operating costs significantly. Everybody got, you know, a little bit of a haircut. Like KDOC, the Department of Corrections, got a 4% cut, but KDOT got some huge cuts. That and Kansas Department of Health and Environment. And when I see the big cut for KDOT, I keep thinking, okay, the other foot is going to you know, mm -hmm. hit the floor, and that's going to be, here, counties, here's some roads for you. Right. So I you know, think the heads up right. is what it is. Thank you. Thanks, Carl. <laughs> let, I'll repeat that for you. Since I, I heard every word you okay. said. <laughs> well, said next year's with all that. Well, it's, it's going to be interesting because I don't think this this donut hole in terms of state revenue. I think it's expanding, not it's not static, and it's not shrinking. And because uh, I think more and more people are figuring out ways to dodge their Kansas income tax obligation. Real simple: just make your business an LLC, and instead of paying employees. Make them members of the LLC and give them a draw. In which case, it's reported on Schedule E or federal taxes, and it's not subject to Kansas income tax. In other words, you can give your employees a raise, so to speak, but the source of the raise is not necessarily you, the owner's pocket. It's the money that would have gone to the state of Kansas. Chapter S. Doesn't pay anything, and and C does. That doesn't make any sense. But I, t I tell you, you can form an LLC in about an hour. Really? Yeah, it's, it's just ridiculous. I need to figure it, do something like that myself. What about the internet? Fill in the blanks. And uh, the, uh, I'm just seeing like a bunch of plumbers all of a sudden, instead of having the owner plumber and the guy working for them, now they're all kind of partners in an LLC, just so none of them pay Kansas income tax. Remember, if it's reported on IRS 1040 Schedule C, E, or F, it ain't taxable in Kansas. So the trick is to move your income to one of those schedules by hook or by crook. I think the rates are going to, they won't go ahead with their D accelerating rates, so I think they're going to lock them in for a while. But it's, it's, we don't know the full scope of the problem, is what I'm, I'm saying in terms of revenue shortfall. Mm -hmm. It, 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 it's really it's difficult to measure cash streams. It, it just is the nature of the beast. And uh, uh, but like I say, when I read about you know South Carolina and I understand Illinois also has problems too because Illinois' problems are kind of unique to Illinois. Yeah. Well, their pensions. 
Yeah. Part, part, of, part of the problem was you know, Kansas, of course, has this. You know, I'm starting to be a bigger fan of it with each and every passing year. The cash basis law protects us from going totally stupid. You know, you, you can't spend the more more than what you take in. But Illinois, they were doing a lot of deficit spending under Blagojevich. Or when Quinn got elected, he was. Well, how can they mess with the keepers when that's not their money? Hmm? How can they get the dip in the keepers when it's not their money? Oh, they'll, they'll do it through a, a new piece of legislation passed mm -hmm. by the House and Senate. That's, That's wrong. Do. In so many ways, that is just absolutely wrong. And, and, and the risk of coming across as a total smart ass, I'm one of the people who, under a quirk of law, opted out of capers many years ago. Because I was just not impressed by the people running this defined benefit plan. I actually took a course in law school on deferred compensation because it was taught at a good hour of the day. But I actually learned a lot <laughs> from that course, because you know, it was basically the history of pensions in America, so, you know, starting with like the Studebaker bankruptcy, remember that? Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> well, no, man, the, the Studebaker, I cars, remember. Studebaker <laughs> cars were cool, I like them. I had hundreds of them. It's always the oldest person in the room. I remember this. <laughs> well, he's, he's one of my contemporaries. To the elder I'm, I'm a little older than the other people here. But, uh, in any event, I'm going to go to the Studebaker. I thought the Studebaker Silverhawk was a real cool car. I don't use the term cool idly. <laughs> It's all yours. We got in on that one. <laughs> I've been look, we've been looking around at some motors and how they want to make a trade here at the end of the year or not. Um, two of those units are they've both been one the, the caterpillar was this was a state return. The state used them for five or six hundred. They put so many tires on them and then they turn them back, they put new tires on them, turn them back to the other Um Bank Keppel unit is a, a six month lease out of Riley County. And then Foley also gave me a bid on a brand new one. But I, I was surprised there was no more difference than what there was on its own end. Was Yeah, there's only $5,000 difference. And he said it has a lot more bells and whistles on That's it. the trade difference. That's the trade difference. How many hours did you say that 2012 had on it? Well, it had a when we were doing all this. It started at 8600. So on the 2012? Oh, the 2012. Me. Yeah. Um, 500. I think you see on that thing. 60. Yeah. He said he said the state was needing to move some stuff to make better whatever. So that's that's why it was such a good deal. On Where do you go if you have a Volvo and need? It's out of it's it is out of Wichita. Yeah, and so yeah. there you have ninety miles to get to Holland and whatnot. I did talk to him about. It. I said, well, I said one thing right up front that irritates me to pay ninety dollars for a service ninety yeah, ninety miles for a service call out here. Bad to and fro, so that's $180, usually $3 an hour, or 180 miles a two miles a mile. And that's what it is now, so who knows what it's going to be in a few years. And he says, and so he did come back with me. He said, well, they said they would cut that in half, which is still 45 miles against 30 miles. There's a shop for the end, they have to take two miles over. Well, you know, it just, that's one thing that just jerks me about you know, buying, I mean, I go around with them all the time because three, three and a half and four dollars a mile to pay somebody on that to run a truck up and down the road is just. And if you don't squeal about it, you get that much of them. So there's only five thousand different stuff that trade for a brand new. Mm -hmm. And that would be trading on I thirty the Caterpillar two thousand Caterpillar. And we're going to, and I mean, if we don't do something with it, I'm going to put some money into it because it's, it's, it's to the point it needs some tires. So that's $8,000 right there. 
And the one you're trading off is what year? 2000. Where's this money coming from? We have a special order, you know, special machine like that. We got about 170,000. We'll get some more in there at the end of the year. But that's what's in there right now. So we have a money to pay for this. That's the fact you got to pull. Well, they, they all have the full one-year warranty on. Even, even both used ones, they both told me that they would have a full one-year warranty on. And the new one's the same? Yeah, but you can't, the, the thing with this one, with, we have a year if we want to buy some more warranty with the brand new and we have up to, to this time. If we would purchase it today or the purchase date, we'd have a year to extend that warranty on. Sure, later we can discuss that. As soon as we buy it. Yeah, I just think we can discuss that. I make a motion to uh, accept the trade offer uh, on the 924K. Is that right? 930K. 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 
run fully cat for a hundred thousand dollars. I second it. Okay, we have a motion and a second for the trade in on the mini nine thirty K loader for a hundred thousand dollars. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Gentlemen, thank you. because 
we've had a couple situations recently, and Rob were here, he could you know, give you details. But we have a couple situations where we have like three or four people in a given jail. Sheriff's office gets a call, come and get them. You know, you're, you're being bumped. Because obviously, like Pratt County, they, they put their people ahead of ours. But we're number two with Pratt County. I mean, it's called good PR on the part of the Sheriff's Department, do is true. A lot of times Pratt County's full up. They're building a little mini addition on their jail, by the way. Uh, I don't know for how much. Pardon? For how much? I don't know. I didn't have a chance to ask the county clerk, but, mini additions. but it's pro probably a grand total of six or eight beds, just judging from. It's, you know, the, the jail is behind the courthouse. They're building back from the jail toward the courthouse. I don't know if they can actually meet the jail with the courthouse or not. Who couldn't really tell? Uh, I was down in Pratt on a civil case for a lazy attorney in Wichita who didn't want to drive from Wichita to Pratt, so he pays me to go down there. Lisa, did you have anything? We'll adjourn. <laughs>